Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful day here in my backyard, my test range, and we are going to take a look at something really cool. This is a Regent Mesh Networking radio system. And this is not just any mesh network system. This is an industrial system here made by a company called Regent and it's called Kinetic. Um, it's an intelligent based on AI. Um, it, uh, each one of these radios, we're gonna set these up all around the yard. They are gonna all interconnect with one another. Antennas go on the top and the bottom. There is a PoE uh, connection there. They run on 24 volts PoE. They are all going to interconnect and uh, form a living mesh. This is uh, the technology. It's going to be really interesting. The software behind these things is actually the really incredible part. Okay, there's, there's all our cables. So well, I'm going to start setting these up. Okay, guys, stand by. Has to get that network connection down to them. That is the big change in the industry. And it's the blending or the fusion of these technologies that allow them to do some things that they haven't been able to accomplish before in the field. Okay, guys, I got them all together. Antennas are mounted on the top and on the bottom. And what we have here, this is the PoE cable, it is a watertight Ethernet jack, and that goes right in there. Now, on the other end, you have your PoE inserter. The LAN is where you put your bandwidth in, and the PoE is what goes out over to the radio. Now, this is 24 volt PoE, and uh, the radios, of course, need power, but that's all they need. If they're a node, like a relay node, or um, somewhere in the mesh, only one radio needs to actually be used to input bandwidth from a bandwidth source, an internet source. And then the mesh, once it's got that bandwidth in the mesh, it will distribute it across all the nodes. They actually call these radios breadcrumbs because it's like a trail. Uh, that's what Regent calls these. Uh, that's why I think they're white because they're breadcrumbs. Anyways, I'm going to take a couple inside and we're going to start uh, a mini mesh with just two radios. And uh, we'll see how things go. Okay. Okay, guys, I brought a couple of the Regent breadcrumbs in the house here, and I have them set up here on the floor. I got the antennas on them, and each one is wired with its individual cable. Back to these power inserters, and yes, those are ubiquity power inserters, which is just a standard 24-volt uh, PoE. Um, one of them, as you see, is, got, uh, is plugged into the PoE. Um, this one here, we're giving it PoE, and this is house internet, and uh, you'll see why. Um, house internet is also going to allow me to use the Regent uh, software, which I'm running on my computer right this moment, as you see here, and it's showing on the screen there are no radios present because these are not powered on yet. So we are going to power them on right now. There's number one. And I'm just gonna wait a little bit because I don't want them to come on at the same time. Okay, there's the first one. And as you see, the light is bright white. And now I'm gonna power up the second one. So you get a better idea of the, uh, the power up sequence. Okay, now the second one is powering up. We have that light too. And what we're actually going to look for is a green light. Now you see it's doing that little dance, all the different lights. It's going to go blue, which it's doing right now. And when it sees another one that it can mesh with, which has the same key, obviously, um, they will turn green. And over here, no, we're not seeing anything yet. Oh, 
Okay. Now it's doing a little dance. And now they're both blue. And now they should be finding each other. There we go. Green, green. Okay. And then we come over here and look at that. They're finding each other. And look at that is the link. Now, isn't that cool? It's actually showing that they are both linked using both frequencies. And it's showing us the serial number of the radio 82641 and 644, which is, yes, 641 and 644. So it's those two breadcrumbs. And they are linked together, and we can actually, I think it tells us what the, you know, look at that. We have something like 100 megabit, uh, <clears throat> sorry, on two different frequencies, channel 11 on the 2.4 and uh, on the 5 uh, gigahertz as well. Okay, guys, so next, we're going to go out in the yard, and we're going to set up all of those. And uh, I'm going to put them around the yard. It's going to be interesting having seven of them going at the same time. Okay, let's do that now. Okay, guys, so I'm outside and we're going to start mounting these radios. One of the easiest ways to mount radios and antennas is with these, they call them J-poles, um, commonly used on satellite dishes but uh, has that universal kind of mount. You can mount it on a flat surface or on a vertical surface like a fence, and that's what I'm about to do here. Now, as far as the radio goes, the Regents have, they come with a hose clamp, and we're gonna basically slide that in there, and we're gonna tighten this clamp down, and uh, very, very easy to do. So, I'm gonna tighten that down, and then we're gonna, we're gonna mount that over there and say hi to my neighbor's dog <laughs> okay okay I've got that one mounted up there looks pretty cool you can hardly see the thing and there's the wire the PoE feed and I'm actually going to use one of these these J poles and I'm gonna put another one up over here on the fence and there's the wiring and we will continue along okay well we'll start off with the giant lily pad here <laughs> I'll move up uh, there she is one of the regents I got it mounted up there on the J pole and as we come over here I got another one hiding up there in the bushes and then we come over here and we have another regent right up there we come over here, and I have one right here on the on the, the tiki torch. And I got this guy over here. And let's move on inside. And inside the house, I have two of them. I have that one still on the floor there. And I have this one over here. And this one is actually acting as the master. The bandwidth is plugged into it. And take a look at that, guys. Isn't that cool? They're all interconnecting with each other. And let me, if I click on one of them, it shows its pathways, its connections. And as you see, it's connected to every single one. We go to that one. In the center really cool guys <clears throat> doesn't get any cooler than that and uh, yeah we're gonna dive into this it's uh, a really cool system they call it a living mesh or kinetic um, it adapts in, uh, instantly and automatically to the situation now I have all of these uh, these nodes that they call them breadcrumbs uh, in fixed positions, but they could be actually on vehicles, say at a mine, and as the trucks are driving around, they would all uh, interconnect uh, with each other. And as the the situation changes, as the vehicles are moving, um, they will adjust. 
So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come down here and we're going to we're going to disconnect one of the radios and we're going to see what happens to them. Let's see. Uh, it should go blue or red when they notice they can no longer communicate with that particular radio. And let's see. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that one up there. Yeah, turned red. Now it's blue. So that one is gone. And But all of the nodes can still talk to each other through all of the other nodes. So there you go. Really cool. So I'm going to uh, switch over to a different camera. And oh, look at that. The links are gone now. The links all dropped off. Uh, yeah, that one guy is gone. Gone from the equation. But the Luling Mesh lives on and continues to operate. So, yeah, I'm going to change cameras and I'm going to show you just a little bit, uh, be a lot more clear without doing it this way. Yeah, okay, stand by. Okay, guys, so what I'm showing you here is actually the Regent Breadcrumb Commander uh, software. Uh, and this is where you manage and you configure your breadcrumbs or what I also like to call them nodes because as you see they are acting like nodes. They are all interconnecting. Um, every single one of them is connecting with every other one. Um, you can see that very clearly. Now in order to program one of these guys, let's say we go over here. Or maybe let's do this one in the middle. Configuration and we will see right now you have the option of doing four access points different access points on the 2.4 gig band and up to, to four access points on the 5 gigahertz band now the 5 gigahertz band uh we're actually not using as an access point but it is being used as part of the backbone the mesh over here um the 2.4 is an access point it is on and um all seven of them are have the same access point name programmed in and the same password. Uh, why is that done? Well, that then allows you as a user, say with your phone, you put in the one uh, access point name and password. And as you move around from radio to radio, from node to node, or break prem to break prem, um, it will be seamless. You won't even know. You'll be handed off. Uh, it's kind of going to work like a cellular, a mini, mini cellular uh, telephone system. And um, we actually used this system last month um, in Alberta up on a ranch. They were filming a movie up there. And uh, we had uh, these radios uh, placed around the ranch. Uh, and one of them was plugged into a Starlink. There was no cellular available up there at all. Um, the system worked phenomenally well. Um, the production was ecstatic about how well it worked. And using their phones, you can use a feature called Wi-Fi calling. Um, that's what they used. And they used you know, WhatsApp and whatever else to communicate. Uh, basically, they had uh, Wi-Fi internet, no matter where they were on, on the ranch, thanks to this mesh network. And uh, it really helped them a great deal. Um, and we got nothing but positive feedback from them. So it was all really good. And uh, now I'm going to show you something here. Because this is actually used by the military too, there is a lot of extra security on here. And one thing you'll notice, I'm logged in as an administrator, but I cannot change the Wi-Fi passwords. I can't set any of the passwords. That's because you have to log in there is administrator and there's crypto officer so I need to log in as a crypto officer and now if I go into configuration and I go to that access point you'll see I can now program I, I, I actually can't see what it was but I can change it to something else so that's how this works. And we can also look at, uh, if I click on a particular link, we can look at the link speeds. Um, on this particular channel, 104, 65, 216, and 120 are our interlink speeds between those two radios. So yeah, but just that link there is 
No, what was that? Three or four hundred megabits. Um, this one will probably be something similar. Then you've got that one. So between that radio and this radio, you've got one, two, three. Then there's also like that path and this one, four. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six possible pathways between each radio because there's seven of them. So you add up all of those pathways, you aggregate them, uh, the bandwidth between that one and that one, we're probably in the gigabit range. So there you go, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed that and have a good one. And here is the Boston Dynamic robot with a recent radio on its back. This is a breadcrumb. It's a single node in a wireless mesh. If you turn on more than one, they'll find each other automatically and talk to and through each other in order to deliver packets wherever they need to go. These are our biggest strengths in a nutshell. Ragent breadcrumbs provide secure, reliable, high-performance wireless networks in which everything can move. Now each one of these descriptions, secure, reliable, high-performance, 100% mobile, is individually difficult to achieve, and if you've ever tried to build such a network, then you've seen that for yourself. Achieving all of them at the same time is an extremely hard problem, and that's what makes it interesting and fun for Ragent. We call this type of network a kinetic mesh network. Ragent's kinetic mesh networks use a proprietary peer-to-peer -peer networking protocol we call InstaMesh, and this provides extremely fast responses to network topology changes. We've been using InstaMesh for almost 10 years now, it works very well, and we're still improving it. Even though InstaMesh is proprietary, it's standards compatible. We use 802.11 standards for our physical layer, and our protocol routes packets at layer 2. Basically, if your data can be sent over Ethernet, it can be sent over mesh. InstaMesh is a completely distributed protocol. It has no central controller, no central decision maker, no one node to make a big picture of the network. Uh, and that's good for two reasons. One, it takes time to build a big picture of the network. And two, if the network's always changing, that's a lot of information that's constantly in motion to keep that up to date. InstaMesh always prefers the fastest path to any destination. That's how we make all of our routing decisions, and it's based on the RF environment at the time at which the packet needs to be transmitted. In other words, we're making routing decisions on a packet-by-packet -packet basis. And we do this by allowing each breadcrumb in the mesh to track its own RF environment and its own traffic statistics and share just a small amount of information with its neighbors. This approach allows us to make extremely fast local decisions and react immediately to changing RF and network conditions, and eliminates the idea of any single point of failure.